I hate it. And it's always offend, offending for myself and yeah. insulting for myself for somebody saying that we are cooperating or like it's it's a good thing for us. Uh, like we do some additional money like for the with the cheaters and the cheat developers. F you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast, the show dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life with a heavy focus on the first-person shooter Escape from Tarkov. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam, a Tarkov content creator. And I am Veritas. Uh, before I introduce our very special guest today, I do want to give a quick <laughs> happy birthday to oh. <laughs> uh, Jesse. It is his 30th birthday today. Welcome welcome to the 30-year-old uh, club. Well, thank Hope you, you enjoy your... Uh, your initiation gift, which is basically every day you're going to wake up sore in some new part of your body that you never paid attention to before. So I'm congratulations. excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so today we are extremely fortunate uh, to be yep. uh, to be blessed with the uh, presence of himself, Nikita, the COO uh, and chief game designer of Battlestate Games. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, um, he is uh, on Instagram. Uh, his handles uh, Nick Jeanburn, N I K G E N E B U R N, um, and for those of you paying attention, you'll recognize Jeanburn as. Yes. I, it still blows my mind that people don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> I make like fifty new fifty new people every day. Are like what? That that Jeanburn is effectively Nikita, and he is the one that makes all of the music for uh, the Tarkov soundtrack, which you can check out on uh, SoundCloud and recently Spotify. Um, it's the best. Best OST, I would say it's it's, so it's, good. it's yeah one of the best OSTs ever. So, uh, welcome Nikita. Welcome Nikita. Thank you for being with us. Uh, th thank you for inviting. First of all, Jesse, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thirty years is like a big number. You still like left ten ten years left to like make everything right. <laughs> <laughs> then... This is my recipe for life. You know, I need to. Uh, to do as much as possible till I will hit uh, 40. So, yeah, that's that's my philosophy. There you of, go. Of All right, I got 10 more years. <laughs> right on, right on. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, yeah, let's talk about, uh, like, I don't know what, what you're actually prepared. So Yeah, I mean, I can open up with, with what I think, like, the goal of today is. Yeah. Um, it's, the goal of today is not, to be the same podcast that you know happens all the time that are informative and entertaining but uh we wanted it to be a little bit different um we're not going to be we we don't have leaks of upcoming content we're not going to be asking about like the hot button issues that are going on right now that everybody wants to know about um and we're not trying to hammer nikita with like a hundred rapid fire questions you know just give <laughs> us yes or no give us dates you know that's not what we want to do here um we what i really want to do is have a discussion um so that all of us can have a better understanding, context, and perspective on kind of all the different points of view. Mm -hmm. um, we want to learn both for our sake um, and for the community's sake as much as we can about Nikita, um, his vision for the future of the game, and as much as we can about the dev team at BSG so that we can understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, um, and then also want to give Nikita some perspective from our side of the fence to hopefully lead for more meaningful communication between the community um, and the folks at BSG, as well as the community in internally to the community yeah. uh, communication within. So um, real quickly, I just want to say that like we as community members have a role in this community. Um, everyone from Nikita, the devs, the QA team, customer support reps, community managers, emissaries, Sherpas, down to content creators, big and small, uh, veterans, all the way to the level one who's loading into woods with a Makarov <laughs> for, his, for his first raid right now. Like, Nikita wants to make his vision, his dream a reality. Um, and I really do think that, like, he wants our testing to be informed and to come with constructive feedback so that he can really make the best game that he wants to make and that he's wanted to make for, you know, for years now. Um, so, and at the same time, we all want our voices heard. So to better understand, uh, the wants, needs, hopes, and challenges and everything, um, I think I, we wanted to have this kind of discussion. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to be like taking questions from chat, um, or anything like that. Uh, it's more just 
you know, focus on the things we want to that I think are going to be the highest value um, so that we can kind of move forward in a healthier and more sustainable way. So I guess all that being said on the topic of health and sustainability, how yeah. are you, uh, Nikita, and the, the development team? How are you guys feeling lately? How are you guys doing? What's uh, what's what's it feel like over there? Uh, actually, it's still uh, the same as it was before. Uh, we are working on the 12.12. .12. We are working on the 11, 12, 11.5. Okay. So there will be intermediate page also. And uh, the main, the main thing, the main, uh, I don't know, the main uh, part of work right now is to make everything in time in terms of 12.12 .12. and uh it's all about the process and the communication the communication within the team and it's all about the planning it's all about the feature cut it's all about like the actual management yeah mostly as uh, we have a lot of specialists within the team who works uh, really well and uh they know what to do and we just need to route them make everything right uh, pick like the correct choices and uh, just like not to delay uh, the release of 4.12 .12, for example and uh, this is it like the, the the i think not like the big part but uh, the big amount of of the team uh, right now is on vacations like you know, like work working type of vacation. I don't know how to say it actually. Like you can take a vacation officially while you work, and uh, they like right now trying to take some rest before like the the final sprint of twelve point twelve. And uh, yeah, like right now it's 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 nothing like super hard or. Uh, like stressful it's more like the typical kind of work but again uh the main thing is it's not only about uh, to make a correct like plans and to uh solve like initial problems of an actual production it's more like to control the actual production right after the like the planning right after the uh, like initial task placement mm. and and so on so it's more like right now it's more like to control things and uh because like <clears throat> it's it's not like a secret it's not something new that uh you, even if you have if you have a really good design a really good planning all the estimations and stuff y y you still can fail like the whole team can uh, could fail if you don't have a proper management of the process so uh, mm -hmm. right now it's more about management. Like my work is like lo located near the near it, like direct management and uh, different kind of problem solving within the team and so on. So yeah, you know, like we, we are trying to make everything in time. So this is it. Interesting. So I, I think I, I actually that's a good segue into yeah, for sure. one of one of the things that we want to talk about, um, which is just like the the team and how you guys go about from a high level uh you know we don't need like necessarily specifics but how you guys go about designing features like do you um do you have like team brainstorming sessions or do you put someone in charge of the, as like a feature owner and have like a small group go in a room for three days and whiteboard <laughs> stuff out or or you know do you come up with like the feature bible and then just hand it to the devs and say build you know like, how do you guys go about designing uh what, you know what how the features are made a good question because actually uh lately i want to refine this process because mm. i'm the the vision expert of the <laughs> ET. I, I know how exactly the game will be played in a year for example or yeah. i i know what uh, the people needs right now what they what, what what they want actually to have in the game and uh what they want today is to play and uh, <clears throat> the thing is like every feature uh, has been planned by myself so I, I i planned everything in the game 
uh, even it could be like the small kind of description of the feature it still uh, has its like boundaries has its key points that will be used within the game and uh, i uh, usually i take this idea or a small description of it with different kind of uh then i need to find this word different kind of details yeah and i put i put it in in the game designers team and they like refine it and make it proper design make proper design documentation around this feature constantly consulting with myself uh because uh i can see different kind of issues i can foresee these issues in the future uh not every issue of course but the yeah. most of them and uh i correct I correct them and we make this uh design document of the feature establish feature owners and uh, develop the feature so uh, usually it's me who give the initial boost the initial idea the mm -hmm. initial design and then uh the game designers team pro like propose uh, proposes to, to, to myself different kind of changes tweaks like ba balancing changes or innovations within the feature and i just approve or disapprove or make some like corrections and usually it, it we work like the team within the team so i am the game designer designer too and i not only the game designer i also the superior who need to yep. approve or yeah. disapprove things because i have the vision and i believe that i'm doing this right yeah <laughs> and uh, the thing is like unfortunately not everybody within the team see the little details or even medium details about this vision and they can make uh unpredicted or even harmful things for the yeah. process they they can do like a really detailed approach for the feature and it's not needed because we need to make something simple for yeah. now for the first iteration of it and they just like building like the castle you know with all of the features yeah. with all of the details and uh, it's it could be really harmful for the like timing for the like the duration of the production and it could lead to delays and it, it will not be cool yeah i mean that makes that makes a lot of sense to have you as like the head visionary as somebody who kind of sees all that and then yeah, and and it's 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 easy to get you know, if somebody wants to make a certain feature, they want to make it the best that they can. And then they maybe can overcomplicate that a little bit. But that, that makes sense. To, it's cool to hear about that discourse where it's kind of like constantly ping ponging back and forth between you to like make sure it's all there. Yes. Um, it's like this. How do you like how do you how do you guys go about deciding like what's coming next? I'm assuming a lot of this has come from your your vision for the game over the years. I mean, you've been working on the game for years. I'm sure you were visioning the game even before that. Like, how do you guys go about like picking, you know, what comes next for some of these features? Like, do you just kind of have a bank of ideas and you're like, do you have like a master escape from Tarkov notepad or like, is there kind of some sort of thread that ties it all together? Like, it's a, it's a complex process. It's a complex and complicated process. And the question as it is, uh, there is a, Mm, the roadmap yeah you know that we have the inner roadmap and we have all the features we need for the release of the game so we have like must have features within the game and uh, first of all i select the features from there mm -hmm. but there is like several limitations to this process first of all technical limitation for example we can't mm. uh do this feature because uh, like the engine like it's not using unity 2019 for example or we don't we, we can't release this feature because we don't have a some kind of technology within the engine that needs to be done for example like animation uh, rag dolls or something so it's kind of blocked yeah uh, tech in technical way but the second thing is that some of the feature uh, <clears throat> uh, features become obsolete. They just, like, I don't know, useless. They, they they can't feel the same as I felt them like long time ago. Mm. It's just, they will not fit in the current uh, gameplay. Cause again, uh, the the EFT is being developed live 
and a lot of different kind of features uh, like we came in mind just like like about the actual feeling of the players that actually play the game and uh, we need to see that yeah i need to foresee that in the future so i must pick the correct features that will actually be needed so i like the hardcore features and uh, i like 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 really mm, hard and intellectual features that uh, hard to do actually and uh, most likely they will be used by like one percent of the player base and this is kind of mm, painful choice for me so i need to select something that will fit more that will uh, utilize more players and will have greater impact in terms of like innovation emotions you know like content feeling and, and so on yeah so uh i try i'm trying to select these features uh constantly looking back on the actual feedbacks of the player of the players yeah and like i'm looking how they play and they just like uh, there is so many uh times that, that I, like i felt what exactly needed and the players actually did not say it say about it they just played and i saw like oh i think in the future they will actually need this kind of quality of life uh future yeah and uh, it's like always uh, i'm always questioning myself and i'm always questioning the process uh what which feature to use and to add on on the plans uh in a specific like page for example yeah. 12.12 11 and uh this is it so <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense i think it's really important so like one thing that you put in there i think it's really important for me to hear and hopefully the community to hear when you were talking about what features you pick like understanding that sometimes some of those features aren't necessary anymore like you're saying like you're mm -hmm. you're making the game live and you might revisit something and be like hey that doesn't fit like that i think that's important for everybody to know because we're all part of this this thing but I think what you were touching on about like kind of gauging from the community and seeing like what their reaction is to certain features and what they're wanting. What do you, uh, th what are, do you feel like you, you guys at BSG get what you want the most out of the community? Like, is there anything more that we can be doing? Like, is it, are you guys looking more just like data side? Like people are playing this, we're seeing the data of, these numbers, who's using this, what is happening? Um, do you guys wish that more players use the like bug report feature? Are you happy with how the community provides like, like what it, is there any like spot where you're like, man, I wish people would do this more often or help us in this way. And if so, like, how can we kind of as the community be there for you guys more? Uh, actually, uh, the flow of the information like the positive information I, I i call i call it this way because it's positive for the development not for myself yeah and uh, there is a like the constant flow of this information because people usually trying to make some third party tools like different kind of tutorials uh, suggestions with the, in a in a good graphical way like the like designed way uh, like some kind of charts or something and uh, it's always what the, was there like it's always uh, people always try to to make it and they continue to make it right now the only thing that i really need always needed is how to say it like it's it's to, it's to make it constructive yeah and uh, structurized and uh, with a sense of respect for the development so usually uh, if you see some kind of suggestions it's always like oh uh first of all they are fucking lazy and i will teach them how to actually develop the game yeah and the suggestion part yeah and it, it's it's kind of i don't know it's disrespectful i think 100%. first of all and i just like I, i'm reading that actual description the actual suggestions and i and i can see that 
some really good points but i have this scent you know mm -hmm. and uh, i just I, i'm not willing to, to to continue to like make some notes or something i'm not talking about please love us for the sake yeah like please just please love us and yeah. please use like the correct words and be nice to us no i'm talking about like the common sense you know just to say things straight and uh, this is it like i'm open for that I'm always, I'm loving that people are trying to not only help, they do a research, Veritas, for example, and uh, uh, make it like available to understand not yeah. only myself, but the wide audience. This is cool. But again, if it like wrapped around some kind of harassment, you know that? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's not cool. And I wish, I wish uh, we, could have this less in the future because it it, it 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 just doesn't help at all like this kind of behavior it, it doesn't help and uh, this is it other 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 than that like i'm really happy for the five years the community uh, made a lot of suggestion we like actually introduced a lot of things of changes yeah. based on the suggestions and uh, this is cool like in general yeah, I uh, I to totally agree, <laughs> and uh, I think that's like that's part of the reason why we wanted to have this conversation 100%. is because the only thing worse, like the thing that that gets in the way of constructive criticism and like helpful criticism, um, is when people will agree with the criticism but unconstructively. You know, like let if I experience a bug and let's say I might be frustrated about it, and then I'll say, you know, oh, you know, okay, this this. I should let the developers know about this bug. And then someone says, yeah, that bug sucks. These guys have no idea what they're doing and I hate them and they just want our money. That's that's when it's like, no, I, you're not on my side. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I can definitely be salty and complain. But uh, but you have to realize that like these are like human beings. Um, and, of course. Yes. and when I, you know, like I, I, I talked to Nikita a bunch yesterday and the, just the fact that he spends so much time talking not only here but like even in private messages throughout the day about little things um I, I just have to say that like i've never gotten the sense that nikita was not not genuine and he didn't care yeah. about the like 100 percent that when it comes to things like um we, we don't have to get into this but when it comes to things like bugs and things like cheaters i know that he's very much like myself where you take pride in your work and you feel like people uh who are like either doing exploits or whenever there's issues that you want to fix like you want to fix them because you want to put something out there that's good um so whenever people like question yeah bsg or nikita's motives for stuff i just i think that's bullshit and uh anytime i've ever talked with nikita in private or in public i've never gotten a sense <laughs> that any of that stuff was not uh he wasn't telling the truth i like i of course, there is a lot of haters, a lot of uh, people who just don't like they, they they don't they don't wish us to succeed. Uh, I understand yeah. that even, but uh, I don't know. I just can't be the other way because if if we had some kind of big and critical issue, I will wake. I will like try to get as much people as possible the developers to fix it even if it's a weekend and it's not like a, like a mandatory the developers like my team they are always wishing uh to have the game you know near perfect condition they're yeah. always trying to make it better and it was always like this and uh i don't know people i i understand that if you like frustrated a lot yes you can write some things uh on the social media some like bad things about us because <laughs> you are like didn't hold it in yourself so like you, you you felt that it was really needed to make it but i don't know what's like the reason because uh of course we are reading it a lot of things uh, within the social media on the Reddit, and uh, it's 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 not 
it, it not helps. It 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 doesn't help because yeah. it like it just frustrates us. But like, again, it's not something special that we didn't learn or something. Yeah. It's it was always like this, so <clears throat> it's okay. And uh, I'm I'm just only wishing that in the future there will it will be really cool if we like will like have it less or something like a little less of this more constructive things yeah less like rude things against yeah. uh, about us <laughs> I, I have a feeling that I mean other than just like the people who are normally toxic I think some of the frustration comes from historically like other games where people feel like they even if they were to give constructive criticism to like EA or something like they're not going to listen yeah so they might as well just complain <laughs> as loudly as they can you know um so but but we're I, we've seen the communication between bsg and the community um you know it's it's gone up and down it's, it's changed throughout the years but it they've been super communicative yeah. and i only see it you know i see it going in the right direction for sure um so we just have to keep that in mind uh but, but this is a good segue into the the next topic i want to talk about um which has to do with you were talking about community members providing constructive criticism and feedback um and i think from from the community's perspective from the from the player's perspective sometimes that can be hard when if we don't quite understand what the intention is um behind a certain design um and because it, it, it's hard to know if something is is designed to be like very specific in a, in a certain way or if maybe that certain thing you noticed was an edge case that was a bug right that you would maybe want to report um mm -hmm. one of the examples um that i just give a simple example um because it's something that comes up like almost every day uh when you you can have your head or your chest blacked out if you uh if you have a bleed and you won't die i know some people think like oh this is a bug i should be dead when i i at least my understanding is that that's not a bug that you can have those zones bleed out and that won't kill you um unless you take more damage there um but then the next part is uh, you know, you could heal yourself totally up and you could have a blacked out leg and a blacked out head. If you were to run on that blacked out leg, you would take damage, but you would survive. Now, if in an alternate scenario, if you were to stop that bleed, you would like react quickly, right? Stop that bleed and end up with one HP in your head and a blacked out leg. If you run, you actually will die. So it's actually better it's better to have zero HP in the head than it is to have one HP in the head. So something like that is really interesting because it's like, is that intentional or is that a bug? And how, you know, like, I don't even know if I should report it because yeah, it's been in the game know? for as long as I've been there, but it's, I've just never heard anybody talk about it. Um, okay, first of all, uh, this kind of things, it's always better to report it. Because uh, right, what you described, it's a bug actually. Because you, you don't like if you have like blackout, blacked out head, and uh, it's impossible actually to have blackout head or chest. So if you bled out within your with your head, you like will die actually. But something feel. Is like uh -oh. it's something something is not Forget right, I so. said anything. Forget <laughs> I said anything. No. Oh no! So it's, uh, actually, it's a bug, and uh, I I'm I'm mostly like po po positive that uh, it's already somewhere in the plans to fix. But again, for any kind of issues that you encounter and thinking that, uh, or it's a bug or a feature, better report it, and mm. it's always a good thing. The massive amount of reports, but the controversy or how to say it like if, if we, we, we will starting to receive like some kind of issue and many of the players will talk about it and send reports about it then most likely we will look at in it more faster like we will tr try to think we will change and look yeah. for the fixes i don't know uh, we, we just like bring you we will bring attention for the issue 
issue it, it could be issue it could it could be an intended thing so we will definitely make some kind of statement or we will say like this is bug it will be fixed or something so better report this okay cool uh, <clears throat> yeah uh, about, about different kind of changes that uh, you like discover like this sometimes uh like we have a general idea that the new content new like places new quests new i don't know something related to lore or like content itself we want to keep it secret so you yeah. can discover it yourself but we don't want to keep the basic changes like the basic mechanic changes secret because it's like the big changes and yeah they could let go to the game changer scenarios so most likely if you like encountering something that was not in the patch notes and you feel that is kind of game breaking or game changing most likely it's a bug most likely it's a bug or a disbalance thing so you just need to report it don't need to shout about it yeah, don't need yeah. to like oh my god the game is ruined uh, or something you just need to report it or okay you can report it via like the social media but the calm and correct way just like i'm reporting that something is not right and we we saw a lot of things like this in the social media on the reddit for example and i personally like pinpoint all of these posts and send them right away for the team in specific like mm. chats related to different kind of uh, like blocks of the development related to networking you know anti-sheet uh, yeah player movement and stuff or current features or completed features and i'm just like saying like look guys what's wrong with that and they are like thinking about what's wrong what's wrong because it's always a chance small chance that something was missed yeah. in the patch notes and uh, unfortunately it's a shame but unfortunately we can miss something and this something could be some really important system changes and uh, i personally think that we better we need to say it we need to say about it we need to yeah. put it in patch notes and uh, it's a good thing <clears throat> so yeah but most likely in 80 percent i think it will be some kind of bug or issue like the problem that needs to be fixed or corrected or change it or something something so better report it and uh, cool of course if it will be if it will, will be something really critical yeah uh, about the game we will we will know it like really really fast but sometimes it's just something uh, it's sometimes is uh, there is a chance that even big issue could be missed yeah the, 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 that's the, how the software process, works yeah <laughs> yeah the, pro, the process is complicated and sometimes it's just not obvious for us because we are not receiving enough amount of complaints about it yeah. or something like the community managers or like the support missed the thing somehow and uh, it's always like the small chance that we can miss something really important and uh even like like i i really i hate to discover the thing the things yeah for example issues within the game that like everybody is talking about but i don't know personally about these issues mm. and it's like it frustrates me a lot actually this is the most hateful thing <laughs> in development for myself to find something bad first yeah like if i find something first for me like it's a it's a failure for the whole like development process for the whole box tracking box gathering community management yeah uh, you should be the last management. one yes yeah. of course and uh, this is frustrates me a lot but it means that i will bring this feature on and make like the top priority yeah and so i in, like in, in the minutes yeah so I mean, I think that that's good to know. So, I mean, it's like at the end of the day, when in doubt, just report it. And I think that's I think that's just so important to hear. It's like that's why the relationship between player and you guys at BSG is so good. And that's why going back to what you were saying earlier, it's not about like it's not about like 
hurt feelings or like we need to love BSG. It's just about productivity. It's yeah. like you guys are like it's it's empathy to understand that you guys are so swamped that sometimes you might miss something. And it's it's productivity. The best way to do it is just to report the bug, maybe bring it up on social media, but do it in a way that's constructive and just saying, hey, is anybody else uh, like seeing this happen? And just like that's just the quickest way to to get it done, to bring it to the attention because it's it's totally understandable. Like I don't understand how game design works. I don't understand how much work, how much code goes into all this stuff. So understanding that it's like because I think there's. I think there's a whole lot, there's a spectrum of what people feel, but I think a lot of people feel like they're just like, oh, why, you know, why should I report a bug? You know, they already know. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe not. Like, it's always better to just present the information. And then as the player, that's my responsibility. If I experience something to present that information to you and then trust that you guys can address it or, or acknowledge it. So, yeah. So the, the other side of it, if we have uh, a really good player who reports uh, stuff, bugs like a long time ago already like he do it he he, he he does it like all the time report and he like he doesn't feel the response like the feedback from us and th and he start he starts to think that like we don't care it's not true just like know that we are not we we we, we, we are not like this because yeah Again, uh, it's complicated actually because sure. there's a lot of uh, there is a lots of ongoing things like we kind of built uh, the plans for the twelve point twelve, for example, and we of course we are always making some kind of place, some kind of uh, operative uh, area for the yeah. current bug fixes, hot fixes, and stuff. But sometimes it's not enough. Like we yeah. uh, we made like not. So, you know, how to say it, like, it, it's not enough for us. We, we, we planned and uh, selected uh, the small amount of this time that we need to, like, uh, use for the bug fixes and stuff. Like, this current bug fixes and hot fixes. Yeah. And uh, we, we always need, you know, that to, to play this game, like, to select the lesser evil, you know. Yeah. We will fix that, we will not fix this. And it will be a shame, of course, but again, we need to constantly evaluate these bugs, evaluate these issues to select the proper one to fix. And it's hard because we just can't fix everything instantly. Yeah. And we need to like make the plans for it too. And uh, sometimes it's just really hard to estimate. And sometimes it's really hard to actually decide what to, to fix. But again, if you report the stuff, if we can see that uh, on the like on the Reddit, for example, like some kind of issue that always uh, like brings on top of the of the Reddit, and of, it, it's it's perfectly seen that something is not right. But it's not only about the social media because support is working much faster. Because usually when we upload the patch, even the small one, for example, the the, the last mm -hmm. like small patch, we. Uh, the second we just uploaded the patch, we're starting to gather reactive reports within the community and uh, support. So it's just up constantly updating the list of the current issues. Yeah. So we can see and select the most, like the first, like, res like first responder thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just something pops up and we just, okay, it's, it's, it's going for the fixes. For example, when we uploaded uh, the last patch, <clears throat> last uh, 11.2 uh, 12.11.2 yeah we discovered like the issues with with tags and stuff like colored labels and we discovered the issue about uh, the flea market uh limitation like level 12 limitation and box with it and we like instantly started to fix them and release the patch this day so yep. we like have this kind of flow but Again, like the quick issues, the visual issues, uh, the big game breaking issues, <clears throat> we, we we get them really fast. Yeah, uh, this to, to to fix them. But sometimes the ancient evil, you know, sitting over there, and it seems like everybody is playing with this evil for the whole like two years, and somehow I don't know how we didn't fix it yet, and this is frustrating and. Somehow it needs to be 
we need to be reminded, I don't know how to say it, like we need to be put the attention on it once again. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, I think that it, knowing, just knowing that like, if, if we see things that we think might be weird, you know, uh, I feel like there are times where I am like, I don't think I want to report it because I think it's intentional because it's been there for so long that, and maybe everybody thinks that, so nobody ever reports it. Yeah. Um, so that's good. To, it's good to know that like, <laughs> for sure. um, that, you know, Every, every now and then I might have a report and it might say, I think this might be a bug and I'm totally fine hearing from you or hearing from support that, no, that's intentional. Um, you know, just as long as knowing knowing what you want um, and then knowing either that it's not what you want and you're going to fix it and that it, you're planning on fixing it soon or fixing it in the future um, or that it's the way it's supposed to be and we have to live with it. Um, knowing that any of those things are better than not knowing and then just being yeah. salty about it. Um, so one of the, I think it gets actually kind of more subtle, but also more interesting when you think about, you were talking about hardcore elements and, and how you're mm -hmm. involved in a lot of those things. Um, so for me, I actually really like the like knife edge balance you guys are on when you design the hardcore punishing features. Yeah. And I think that there are like really great examples of punishing features that have really awesome, like genius. Like, I'm not even sure if it's accidental or if they're on purpose, <laughs> but like genius, like forethought. Um, like, for example, um, around the USEC camp, there's the mines. I love that there's no signs that are posted up around the camp about the mines, but I, but only because the mines don't kill you on the first one. If they killed you on the first one, I would hate it. It would be miserable because there's nothing you could do. You wouldn't know about it. You know, you couldn't really learn from it. Um, but the fact that you get, you know, you blown up and you survive and then you can heal and get blown up and survive. And then the third one, you're probably going to die. Like I like that because it's punishing, but it lets people respond, react and learn. Um, the mm -hmm. same thing is with um, Tagila and the hammer. Oh, yeah. How he can just smash you. I sent you a, a video like the second day <laughs> after the wipe, and you were like, this is cool, where I was just like limping as a scab, and Tagila was just hammering me. It felt like a horror movie. Yeah. And the thing is, is that that was punishing, and that was hardcore. It actually might not have been like perfectly realistic that he took so many shots, but it doesn't matter. The fact is that he didn't instantly kill me, and I could like... I was scared and I could run away and I had a chance to do something. I, I like that. Um, yesterday was the first time I managed to go months without ever seeing the cultists. I didn't look at screenshots. I didn't look at clips. I had no idea what they looked like. Nothing. Yesterday, I'm in woods nighttime and I killed a bunch of people. I was sitting there for like 20 minutes talking to chat, just sitting there not paying attention in the dark, showing them the difference between night vision and no night vision. And then all of a sudden, you see a silhouette in the distance. And I'm not looking at the screen. I'm sitting there talking to chat. And then all of a sudden I hear a brush behind me and I turn around and I scream like a girl because this guy comes up and stabs me in the chest and runs away. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then I just they're circling me and I'm like limping around. I had dropped my gun because I wanted to get it back in insurance. But all I had was a pistol and I didn't have any other mags for it. So I, I realized that I screwed up. I was careless and I put myself in a bad position and I could have recovered from it. But I didn't, so I like that hardcore and I like that punishing. But then there are other aspects that I think sometimes feel less good that I wonder it, how intentional they are. So for example, um, the same day I was hunting Sturman for a quest and I was being careful, I was paying attention, I wasn't being careless. I had everything I needed on me, really good armor, really good ammo, and I hear an SVD shot off in the distance. And I'm like, cool, that's, that's Sturman, like, let's go. And, and I peek over the hill to try to see where he is because he sounds like he's 100 yards away. And bam, bam, I'm dead. Two shots to the chest. And there's nothing I could do. Like, he hit both shots. He saw me when he was shooting at somebody else. And he turned around. And so that's this thing where it's like, that feels crappy because there's I, I didn't feel like I made a mistake. I didn't feel like there's anything I could do. I actually felt like I was being smart saying, oh, it looks like he's busy with somebody else. Now would be a good time to try and get that advantage. So... I guess all that being said, that long diatribe, do you see a distinction between 
punishment, like punishing features that you can actually like do something about versus punishing features that you can't? And do you think that that second part, like what place does that have in the game, if any? So, like uh, you described the like first two scenarios when it was totally intended, it was tested this way, it was designed in my head this way, it was supported by the other team members who has yeah. the same state of mind as myself. Mm -hmm. So the minds, uh, so, like, unfortunately, not everybody in the team feeling that, but some of the team are really feeling what I wanted to give. Yeah, and, and the players feel it. Yeah. Yes, and they make some changes and they do uh, different kind of small features within the concept and philosophy of, of the game to make it hardcore and playable at the same time yeah and realistic but but sometimes uh especially early things for example ai of of uh, of bots and ai of bosses uh it was done with the lack of experience how to do it properly and uh, it needs to be tweaked a lot and we did a lot of tweaks a lot of fixes and still we need to gather your opinions about it and yeah. usually when it comes to fix some strange behavior of ai we always gather the, the reports for example this way like why uh, Sturman shoots you in the head instantly because it's intended to for him to be really quick and really like i am acquisition too fast and human rates just because he's a sniper and he's like wood wood woods wood woods how to say it like forest warrior yeah forest okay ninja. and uh, it was intended like this but even if, if it actually has like the unhuman kind of reaction it's not intended so it needs to be tweaked and it's like it's possible to tweak it this way and uh that's, that's really really good to know because yeah Unfortunately, this is where like the community versus community yeah. arguments happen where I might experience something that you would, might admit like, yeah, that's broken. You know, like maybe maybe if if the scav boss throws a grenade and then runs at you and at the grenade, <laughs> it's like was that programmed or was that just a bug, you know, like but some people would actually argue, no, that's intentional. Yeah. They put that in there on purpose and it's like well, how do you know? I don't know, you know, so... <laughs> like, it's like, a, it's, a, it's like a reaction pool. It's like the pot, you know? Because we always trying, we always try to make every single boss unique. We constantly add the, the pieces of his AI, yeah. like something new and innovative. And it's kind of multiplies uh, and mix with all of the older part of the code the older part of the behavior and it could lead to unpredictable results for example we uh, like add more defensive maneuvers yeah. for the uh, ai and it could mix with the older ones defenses assault and it could bring us these kind of things like here going uh, with the grenade or something but again uh, I remember that for the for the glue heart, uh, we added the thing is uh, so called uh, go in by the grenade. So he throws the grenade, waits right after he like the grenade is about to explode, is about to explode, and then rush it in. Oh my like, god! Like go with the, go with the grenade, and maybe this is some pieces of the AI move to other ones and uh, mutate gotcha. it in something like unpredictable. And of course, this is a good thing to actually have the actual unpredictable AI who can yeah. uh, do stupid things. Uh, yeah, people and, do uh, stupid things as yeah, long as, it, stuff, as, long as yeah. it makes some amount of sense, right? Like, yes, yes. And but you sometimes guys... anomaly, anomalies could, you could break the immersion. And this anomalies need to be toned down, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and you guys are doing point. an amazing job, by the way, with the scav bosses. Like, I think that's that's one of my all-time favorite features that's ever been added to the game since. Like, I was playing, I was trying to get Insomnia done, so I was doing Nighttime Factory, just trying to grind out PMCs. 
and I flipped up my night vision because there's lights everywhere and I peek and I see Tagilla around the corner and he immediately throws a grenade, pulls up his gun, shoots. I'm behind a forklift. He shoots at me twice, almost as if to suppress me and then disappears into the night. And I just hear, <laughs> I, dude, I just hear running and I'm like, oh, so I'm healing up. And he took one of the new tunnels in factory and ended up mm -hmm. behind me and killed me. And at the end, yes. I saw Tagila, and I was like, he flanked me. I was like, he suppressed me. He threw a grenade. He hurt me, so I'm healing. And then he shot me in the yeah. back of the head. And I, that's exactly what Veritas was saying, where it's like, I died. That was hardcore. And I couldn't stop talking to chat about how cool it was. Like, I wasn't even mad that I died. I was like, this is incredible. Like, What, what you described is actually is it like intended behavior of it. Flanking maneuvers. It's yeah. the, the Tagila's kind of know-how feature and uh but again it was uh, awesome. especially old ones and the basic ai has imperfections and uh, unfortunately it's it, it doesn't work this way like you just fix it you know yeah fix yeah the brain, fix something yes we fix something and break something, something else <laughs> yeah yeah and, uh, and it's always like of course, somebody will say, like, you're unprofessional. Blah, 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 blah. They've you never, never written a line of code in their life. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But and, uh, this needs to be tested uh, a lot. Yeah. And uh, slowly we are getting there. Uh, and uh, what exactly will be helpful in this kind of situations? If you will create a list of your complaints about the AI, for example, but with the actual representation of different kind of initiatives so like he threw a grenade and goes over there he just he like, over there. <laughs> i have yeah. i have a stupid ai folder full of clips and i've been yeah. meaning to like I, and i wasn't sure if i wanted to make the video and now i'm gonna make the video like no these are some things that i think you know whatever with examples mm -hmm. i think that's i think that's I, it's it's exciting because again it's hard to yeah it's really hard to know if you know if the if the ideas you have about the the design um a lot of times the community can kind of gaslight you and say well yes. it's supposed to be that way they're supposed to be suicidal all of them and then <laughs> they're supposed to they're supposed to not make any sense and it's like well i don't you know i don't think so 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 knowing that you know yeah. there's realism you know elements but then there's also like you don't want them to be superhuman but you want them to be like very skilled but yeah. there are boundaries like that's that's super and, important. And like it would be like with know. Sturman and, and knowing that like that that's part of his lore. That's part of his mythos. This like I am this like these are my woods. I'm this highly trained sniper. This is my stomping grounds. You know, having that reaction time could be awesome to have that inhuman reaction time. But maybe he hits me in the leg or the arm and I go and now I have the second. Oh, my God. Like, I didn't even know he's there. I go prone. I crawl away. I heal. I reposition. Maybe he sees me again, shoots me in the leg. And that way you kind of have both. He gets to be this like epic sniper, but I don't just get three tap to the Instantly chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get uh, the reason of it because uh, most likely the Sturman is uh, has old parameters because uh, he was just in one place on the oh yeah the wall. so we intentionally gave him a lot of psychic <laughs> super ability perception yeah because it was too easy to flank him yeah too easy to get him because you always know where he is and uh right now we have different kind of points when he he could spawn so maybe you just need to need this parameters. Most likely it's just the reaction time 0.1 or 0.2 seconds or something. And uh, the initial accuracy is 0.9, for example. And uh, the priority part is head. And that's why he hit you like instantly in the head or in the chest. And uh, I know that many of the players uh, think that Sturman is the most like hard boss to to fight with yeah and i know Some, that... the thing is is that half the people say he's easy yeah he's he's the easiest one and then the other half I, I it took me two weeks to do the quest where you have to kill him with the march tactical scope because that scope is <laughs> hard to use <laughs> and uh and it's like i would the one raid i would actually make it there and find him and I'd see him and he'd have his back to me and I'd be like, all right, here I'm going to go. And you'd see in the time it would take to pull the Remington up, 
before I could put my eye to the scope, I'd be dead every time. And it was like, there's, you know, and I crept up, didn't make any noise, yeah. but he, his, like you said, his psychic abilities, you know? So I think, yeah, like it's, that's super interesting. You know, one, one of the other things. Most likely it will be more playable as a feature like Sturman uh, was, if we will just make it like he will have increased uh, time of like reaction, increased reaction speed time timer. Yeah. So it, it will just a little bit slower in terms of reaction. Yeah. And most likely it will be the fix for this current situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but again, uh, really good to know. Don't don't need to, uh, uh, in general, don't need to make some like loud statements and blame us first. Yeah. Because it's yeah. always better for us to give us the material. Yeah. And uh, most likely we will fix it or I will say like this is intended or it doesn't work this way, but it will work correctly in the future or something. And uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't a lot like of us the... have been guilty of this. I know I've been guilty of it before, you know, yeah. so. I don't, I don't like the concept of force, force the developers to fix. Oh, pressure, things. pressure yeah. them. Yeah, pressure, pressure, like mechanics or some pressure. It's, uh, this is like destructive. A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, of course we will be forced to fix it, but we will fix it a little bit faster. But in the long run, it will be like a devastating process, like the reactor overloading kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, I it's can totally see that. Yeah. But again, sometimes the feature or the, the, the bug or issue could be really bad, really, really bad, especially related to exploits, for example. And we totally understand that. We will like, this is the other thing, like the exploits or like game breaking. Uh, box is uh, like top one priority and everybody in the team understand understands that it needs to be fixed right now yeah like this night for example so it's totally okay yeah no need to say, say to us uh, like yeah. another the different time like okay come on why are you like don't, don't, don't like aren't fixing this uh like issue or something <clears throat> um i'll say like so that's so good to know and to hear and uh, like to kind of bring it back to like Veritas's original question about like uh, hardcore, like, you know, what's hardcore and what's broken. I think I think I understand like what you're saying, but I almost want to ask this question almost just like so everybody is like not missing it, but clear. Like when you vision those things, the landmines, the boss AI, the, the things, all the hardcore mechanics of the game, are they mechanics that you envision because like you said sometimes something is implemented maybe it's not implemented correctly maybe it's implemented too much too little that's a different thing but when you like when you nikita when you're visioning the game and and stuff like these hardcore mechanics are they mechanics that the the player has the ability to like react to and learn from and then reward the preparation of going into that raid is it something that that always feels like it should be rewarding a player who learns from their mistakes is that kind of how you view these hardcore mechanics yes exactly like uh, all of the mechanics we like touched uh it was intentional they were intentional yeah and uh, uh for the cultists uh, i had the concept a really long time ago and it was super secret we developed it in like in the secrecy like yeah yeah like uh, how to say it in general secrecy i know how to say it and uh it was really important for myself like to let it be a big surprise and yeah I like the surprises this is the most exciting thing in the development for myself the surprises i i i'm i love to see you getting surprised by the, by the game and, and this which is awesome one of the most like wonderful thing and that's why i continue to keep that like the pace continue to work on the game because i'm always uh like to surprise and give you this unexpected kind of things in a good way or in a bad way even not bad way like oh my god they broke the game i like damn we need to <laughs> adapt because it's really hard like it's it's yeah. nearly impossible to play right now but we need to adapt we need to like 
that, that, that's good to know. Yeah. So, so basically, in a nutshell, if we feel like, and, and there are a few features that, I mean, not a lot. There are a few features that I would argue, and then, you know, I can prepare this and we can talk about it offline, that mm -hmm. where, where I, I f get frustrated because I feel like they're, I did everything right. And there was nothing I could have done, yeah. you know, like the the in, getting insta killed by Sturman, or you know when like a raider throws a grenade through a doorway when they shouldn't, have, like things like that. That it's like, if if we know that those things are not intended, and that as long as you want things to be difficult and challenging, but you want us to be able to respond in some way, not just instantly die, because otherwise you'd put in a mechanic that was. 1% of the time you can die of a heart attack <laughs> randomly. Yeah. Like that's hardcore and it's punishing, but it also like there's nothing I can do, you know, um unless you your endurance stat or something is tied to <laughs> your that cardio your cardio cardio system. health. <laughs> so you are not against the hardcore mechanics. You want solution for it, not for myself. You want to have this kind of mechanic and the ability to find the solution how to like live with it at least not yeah fight absolutely it, yeah like live with it or even win the situation with it and uh, yeah i totally get it and uh, of course you need to filter your experience through your cold blood i don't know how yep. to say it correctly. yeah yeah uh, like you need to just understand that okay i done everything right in terms of tactics my kind of tactics my kind of game style I, I did everything right, I done everything right, and something is not right. Something felt wrong and in human reaction. Yeah. And uh, like shady things uh, went uh, uh, through and uh, yes, you're better reported. Say it like to myself if you, yeah. if you have a connection with myself. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> most likely, most likely I will note it down and we will tone it down or tone it up or yeah. make something else. Or I, I will just say like, Yes, it was intended. Yes, the cultists. Yes, it's intended. Yeah, they have. They will be this way. They will be even harder. They like. I don't know. Like, Which is good because I I want to die. You know what I mean? Like I want to die in Tarkov. I want. I don't want it to be where it's always exactly like we 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 in no way. I don't think any of the players want it to be where like I can I can win all the time. Like the Tagila thing is a great example. Like I died. I lost my gear. I lost my really expensive night vision, and I was happy. I was like that was such a good experience. That was fun. Now he, you know to look out yes, for the flank. He flanked and me. You can play around it. And I think that's that critical thing where it's like does the PMC in this scenario whether they live or die do they have something they can learn from you know when we pixel peak sturman and we just insta die you know what i mean there's no or like sanitar you know sanitar's guys were engaging me from like 200 meters away in the rain i couldn't even see them and when it's like when i die to that i can't learn anything i'm like i don't know what i should have done better so yeah we definitely like we i love the hardcore like we love that so much and i even want it to be punishing and i want i want it to be where if i'm careless i die but at that that like the ability to like become a better PMC, to learn, to grow, to master the maps, to master the area, I think has always been your vision where you the more you master it and learn this game, the more successful of an operator you can be. Yeah, you don't want the solution to be figure out a way to cheese it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. and the game and the game will not bring you this solution. The game yeah. can like give you a hint at least. And again, it will be uh but it will be gathered through your experience for it through, yes. through your prism and uh this is it and this is the ideal principle ideal concept of the game you need to be adaptive yeah you need to learn things and you will gain these advantages like tactical advantages i love it and so on but the game is in development and of course. there is like different kind of roughness that needs to be like polished and different kind of issues that needs to be removed or changed. And uh yes, of course it's not perfect. In some ways, some battles it will you will definitely have like not that kind of experience that we are planned, especially with the cheaters and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's a shame actually, because all of this technical things human related things like cheat cheaters for example yeah. they all uh slowing us down yeah of course 
and uh, you know, it, it's not only like slowing us down. They are um, how to say it, um, slowing the passion of the development. Mm. Oh yeah, they're wearing they're wearing you down. Yeah, uh, yeah. We need to con we're constantly thinking about technical stuff, networking, computers, yeah. networking, like DDoSs and stuff, like different kind of things, like RMTs and everything. We are we just want to make the game, you know, and we we of course we planned like uh something will be in the future related to cheaters, related to like the bad persons. Uh, they will try to cheese out different kind of things like use exploits and we of course we knew that we need to cover this but uh we didn't even imagine that uh the game will be so popular because our estimations were much lower much lower and uh it means that you, like we we uh we need to like we needed to think more about it, I guess, because again, how we could pr predict it. Yeah, correctly. yeah, we could, uh, we could, get, we could spiral off, and I'm sure about the cheaters, and not, you know, that's one of those things that like <clears throat> the more educated people are, the more we they understand how difficult it is. So yeah, I don't, we don't, we don't need to get bogged down there. I do want mostly mostly just because i kind of just want you to say fuck you to everybody that says this but um i i, I just I, I need to i need to hear it once and for all because i all i do all day is ban idiots who come in and say this because i am offended for you people say that you guys love the cheaters because you get more money from them that's a stupid what is your response <laughs> let him have it oh, i i i constantly uh not to constantly the pretty common thing for me like from the russian audience they said th the same thing like we are some kind of co-op i hate cheaters and cheat developers yeah i so fucking hate them i can't sleep like i'm constantly thinking about they like i don't know how to say it like even in english because I, I i i did a lot of things i'm doing a lot of stuff related uh, to like the whole uh, cheater stuff like yeah. working with, with anti cheat making new solutions uh, making new systems to detect them properly and uh, i wish uh, i spent more time for the actual development yeah of my life but constant it's, it's a Usually, I, every single day, the evening, I'm spending several hours for the least like anti cheat things and cheater related things. And I like, <sighs> how to say, it? I don't know, like, I spend my energy for this, yeah, shit, this pure shit and evil. And uh, I hate it, and it's always offend offending for myself and yeah. insult myself for somebody saying that we are cooperating or like it's it's a good thing for us uh like we do some additional money like for the with the cheaters and the cheat developers fuck you yep i mean yeah that, that's 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 it. all that's, that's all, all i needed to hear uh yep I, and i don't think anybody with a with a, a brain that's intellectually honest will we'll really, not yeah. see how genuine you are so I, I appreciate you getting that out of the way and then uh, yeah uh, i think uh, jesse you got to segue on into something different yeah no i i yeah once again i, I appreciate it and we don't want to we don't want to dwell on that but it's just good like even, even earlier you were talking about like the passion for the game and that like a lot of times dealing with this stuff diminishes that passion and, and i think that's what those idiots forget is that like that there's another motivation to make something <laughs> and that motivation could be loving it and your passion for it and that's that's what motivates you guys so 100 percent. but but moving on like we're talking a lot about like some of these hardcore elements some of these other stuff that you guys the, we're talking a lot about like the vision and how you've had this vision for so long and that guides escape from tarkov let's you know assuming let's say it's you know however long in the future and we're like 1.0 the game is released inside of beta you guys have done everything what do you what is the the vibe and the feeling of like what you would consider the perfect raid i think a lot of people 
like you were saying before about this is a live game you're developing it live and a lot of people maybe get bogged down as to like what they see what they experience in raids right now and the example i gave veritas earlier is like right now on interchange you can go in and there's almost always like two or three people hunting killa either for the quest or for the tracksuit and if he's not gone they leave immediately you got two or three people going in for the graphics cards and they leave immediately and like, you know, five or 10 minutes in, there's not very many PMCs left. Is that, you know, what, what's the what's the long term vision of how a raid plays out? Is it slower, more more paced, more tactical or what when the you answer, think about like the perfect raid? The answer is pretty simple. The perfect raid is that kind of raid that you are so thrilled about it that you want to post it on Reddit, for example. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. you live or die. Rate, yeah. Yeah. You can die, of course. And uh, the, the thing is, the perfect rate is that kind of rate that gave you that kind of emotions that we are wanting to, to give you yeah. within, uh, through a game. And this is, it could be five minutes rate or 10 minutes rate. It could be 12 minutes rate. It could be like team based rate. It could be night rate, rain with the cultists, yeah. anything. It's just like you are so eager to post it and uh, like tell the story about it yeah so it's like a pretty magic thing about the actual like session based online multiplayer shooter that you could actually tell a story about it this is pretty cool and i think uh, it, it brings us the developers and you the community the players closer for understanding and experiencing this kind of perfect rate let yeah. it be like og rate or perfect rate i don't know yeah. how <laughs> so it it could actually could be a mix of everything but working well yeah yeah it must work well not perfect because perfect is impossible yeah but as much close to perfect condition as possible and uh, sometimes i hope not like it's not rare but you can feel that yeah even right now within the current uh, game uh, condition and uh, status you can feel that you can feel that kind of rate and i Absolutely. hope in the future i hope in the future we will increase the percentage of this kind of rates and uh, eventually it will be the ultimate like thing so you will play the game you will play the rates and most likely if you will if you like we'll try to <clears throat> play it uh how to say it mm. intellectually yeah uh not like grinding or something it will bring you this kind of emotions and you will say like oh man this was this was the perfect trait and this is it yeah, yeah this story is storytelling is huge and i think the yeah. one of the biggest aspects every time i tell a story that that always puts a smile on my face, whether I live or die. Yep. It's always where I was able to respond to things and I was given a choice and I, w and I made either the right choice or the wrong choice, um, which, um, which I mean, I think kind of ties in the whole idea of uh, making things difficult but not impossible and making it so, uh, you know, you can be reactive and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, the, 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 I think the more you guys do to make it so that, uh, you know, you can react whether or not it's like stamina burn or you know other things there's a there's a whole lot of a whole lot of elements that uh i think add up to that even random elements um you know a lot of people say that you know randomness doesn't belong it's like no randomness adds yeah. adds all kinds of crazy things where you might have a perfect headshot lined up but if that x percent of the time it bounces off that helmet that makes an interesting story for you if that fight is able to continue and the fact that that guy's walking along and all of a sudden bang he gets shot in the head he's like holy shit he's got to run for cover it's it's never fun when you're running around for 15 minutes nothing happens and then your screen turns black and you're back at your menu you know like that doesn't feel good for anyone even mm -hmm. when you're the person on the other unless it's like a thousand meter shot yeah that's the only time it feels good to send someone back to the menu is when you did something that is so rare yeah um mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, how do you guys like, we don't, I, I definitely don't want to get into like the weeds or anything on this, but like, how do you, 
Cause, cause I love that. I guess backing up, I love that that's kind of your North star that like the perfect raid doesn't look like anything specifically. The perfect raid gets your blood boiling, whether you live or die, it gets you pumped. It gets you excited. It gets you super like, you know, you got to take a break. Like I, I love that. That's the guiding star because that's open for everybody. If you want to play slow, if you want to play fast, if you want to be tactical, if you want to be team based, if you want to play solo, I love hearing that from you, that what guides you guys isn't a specific play style, but as long as all the things are coming together and working well, then any play style can have a raid that's intense and exciting. How do you guys yep. see like the loot economy of the game evolving to match that? And once again, I'm not talking about dates. I don't want to talk about like, yeah, get rid of the flea market. None of that, but like, but like we said, a lot of times what can happen is that a whole raid is centered around like loot, you know, whether it's shoreline for the lead X's or interchange for the GPUs where people get in and then get out really quickly just to make money. Do you guys feel like you want it to be more of I want to search everywhere? I want to search everything or or is or has some of that stuff changed since you guys implemented the flea market? Maybe the goalpost has moved. Maybe you used to want it this way. And now because the game has changed, now you want it a different way. But I'd love to hear like what what you guys want to see in the future about with that stuff. So the, like the final uh, the final station of this uh, theme, uh, like economy, is uh, near the dynamic uh, approach, like fully dynamic approach and the limited uh, amount of items within the global economy, the pool of items that will be used as a spawn pools. At the trading pools and everything will be linked so we can bring in like the model of the actual real life economy and eventually it will be like this but <clears throat> the far we go the more interesting things we get we <laughs> yeah get. changes so, lead the changes lead the changes yeah, yeah like it's not only about your experience as a players it's also us like hours experience yeah. as a developers as a game designers because we learned a lot about mechanics we learned a lot about actual virtual economy and mm. uh, like relations trading relations within the game so it's always something new in our minds for example we will utilize more events you will encounter this year we, you will encounter more events, especially related to the economy. For example, we had the fuel shortage. Yeah. It like, <laughs> changed everything. And uh, we want to have this kind of events more, but more linked to an actual economy and actual, like, approximate human kind of behavior of the, of the traders. So it will feel more natural. Like we had somebody sitting over there as a prepper, and he's just oh, again I say prepper as prepper. I tell him proper. It's a proper говорится, а не prepper. <laughs> proper will talk some kind of person like we. Uh, he will sit over there, and uh, it will be his work. He, like he will be an actual proper who will like do things at the trader. But we want to make it as AI, so different kind of things, it will be uh, changed and uh, like the actions will be more dynamic and it will be looking as a real life person. Wait, so, so you're saying like putting proper like in the game physically, like walking up and talk to him? No, no, no. I, I just, okay. I just uh, said about like there was an idea to hire real life person <laughs> in our company <laughs> and his role will be you are the, the, the prepper. Like the proper, and you are a therapist, and uh, like <laughs> another, another traders, and they will sit with the, with the, their computers and do some like trading, li real life, do some events. Like they will have the breaks. Uh, oh. Coffee breaks. oh my god, and, that would be insane! Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, like it's still it could be real as an event, for example. Yeah. But if we will make the optimization of this process, we can make like. The dynamic kind of thing within the game. So, uh, I'm the talking events are about... so helpful too for you guys. Uh, I, I because people with, with these short-term events, I, I people shouldn't 
complain, I think, at all because they're short term. What they do is they allow you guys to test something, yeah. an idea. And even if it's a terrible idea, you'll learn that it's a terrible idea and you'll know the kind of effects that things have. Yeah. So pe we need to be like more open to more of this, Completely more of agree. these, more of this experimentation, just as long as I think like people are just afraid that the thing you guys are trying is overnight going to be the way it is. And, you know, that, oh, I'm going to be sad that I can't, you know, that every time I go to reserve now, people get mad at me for killing them because th everybody thinks that on reserve, you just, everybody's friends and you all just go to the extract. And that's cool, but at the same time, it's like, it, it, you know, it can't be like that forever because then it becomes mm -hmm. a game where why why even bring in a gun yeah. when you can so, just yeah, find a scab bring, and leave. We will bring more of such kind of events and especially in an economy uh, to shake things up, you know? And yeah. uh, it will bring us more experience of how uh, to change the economy system, like at the release version. And uh, this is it. So, uh, the general idea uh, that we don't want a static economy, we don't want to uh, have static loot and uh, known places. Of, of this loot of like the loot containers and stuff yeah we want this to be constantly changing but not like randomly yeah but more like uh you want it to be dynamic but still make sense like yeah. like yeah. marked rooms marked rooms will have a higher chance to have a treasure item but mm -hmm. you can still find rare things all over the place you know yeah, so that you 100%. should search everywhere for example like marked rooms could have less items because everybody starts to kill more cultists and uh, oh this kind of shoot interesting and, uh, like if you if the if the general like reputation with eager is low like the global reputation he will start to make more stupid quests for you oh guys. no or, or, <laughs> no. or, or eager, eager stashes will cease to exist like what this what kind addiction. of thing that's see and that's really cool to hear because yeah because you know everybody likes to kind of run on and on about dynamic loot and dynamic economy and this and that and it's like I, I love that you guys are approaching it where you want it to like feel good and make sense like we don't want so dynamic loot that i open a med bag and find like a graphics card like why would that be in there and i like that you guys are taking the approach where on the one extreme you don't want it where everybody knows the graphics card spawns right here so everybody's running there but you don't just mm -hmm. want to flip it to random mode but actually have something because what i love about tarkov is that like you, it is very lore based like those you know we call those jaeger caches right like we know that the marked room like we know that the marked room are related to the cultists right like and there's marked there's marked symbols even outside of the marked room so I love that you guys want to like lean into that and say, hey, we're killing too many cultists. Maybe the marked room has less things. Everybody is, doesn't want to do the their price Jaeger of the quest. will go down. Yeah, nobody wants to do their Jaeger quest. Well, Jaeger's going to put less stuff in his stashes. Like, I that's so cool. And I know that that's far away and we're not asking for dates or anything, but like, I love to hear that vision from you guys because that's like even cooler than I could have imagined. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and the other part of that is too is that we have to realize. All of the little things that you guys are doing right now, if we know that the vision is some, you know, major thing that's totally different, similar to like Steam Audio, like we know that right now, like vertical audio is, you know, it, it, we know that there's issues, but eventually you guys will implement the second version of Steam Audio and it'll be better. So I don't mm -hmm. even, I still get salty about the audio, but I, but I know, I know, yeah. I have confidence that at some point it's going to be fixed. So I don't even really dwell on it for too long exactly um so people need to realize like when people complain about pricing or availability of items or all of those things it's all so temporary it's all just it's the way it is right now given the current state of the game but so many things are going to change in the future like the loot economy and like the trader availability and stuff that honestly there's like no point in really even saying you should do this or you should do that um because it's we're so far from the final yeah. thing i'd rather let um, you guys work on the big picture stuff you know what i mean and yeah know. figure out like you know oh okay, 
when you make tweaks, what, what you guys should be doing now, and I think it's what you are doing, make tweaks and learn how it affects things. So then later when everything is done, you guys will be that much more likely to make the right decisions yeah. about the final features when all of the maps are, are finished and, yeah. you know, it's open world question mark and, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, it's, I think it's good to hear because yeah, the, the reaction can get pretty strong when you do some of these events. But I, yeah, I just got to filter it through that like this is all data collection that you guys get to build better stuff with. Yes, it's, it's uh, live like, prototypes. Yeah. Like yeah, like for example, uh, even that we had all of the locations and the gen on gen general uh, map of the locations. And we kind of, I kind of thought about what exactly will be on these locations. Is still an object to change because, for example, uh, we decided to add on the, on the lighthouse locations uh, or lighthouse location some kind of cool feature that I just invented like a month ago, and uh, it was brought in my mind just because I. Uh, how do you say it? Just because I experienced all of the feedback, you know, yeah, uh, all of the player like based information and my uh conclusions, like how exactly things going right now in the game. So, <clears throat> of course, we have this kind of basis, the mm, foundation of yeah. the production and, and it will keep the same like the general idea but uh, some things um, change and of course. Uh, something is being invented right on uh, live because like it's it's it's, it's not that I, I, I'm, I'm positively sure that uh, it's, it's impossible to predict and design such kind of the game impossible Oh yeah, so you, yeah. You can't like, do another kind of this uh, yeah. like DFT experience just sitting over there with the studio, like and like doesn't and you do not like speak with anybody and gain any experience and feedback from anybody. Just sitting over there and making something, and it's impossible because it's not this type of of the game. It's it needs to be. Uh, cooperative in terms of like yeah players and players feedback it, it must be some kind of col collaboration even to constantly see what's wrong and what's right and uh, you cannot foresee all of the stuff especially yeah. with this kind of game yeah this is i feel like a perfect a perfect segue to uh, the last topic because i know uh your time is valuable and we don't want to we don't want to take up too much of it but this has been fucking awesome so yeah. far so thank you um the uh the last thing I want to talk about is, for me, some of the most significant, there's been a, I mean, you guys have, you look at the change log, you guys have done a shit ton of work over the last four years that I've been playing. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say that three features were, some of them big, some of them small, completely changed the game, completely, like hugely, massively changed the game. The first one being, and I'll combine these two together. This is a bigger one, but the flea market and the hideout obviously completely changed access to items, crafting, skills, all of that stuff. I mean, that was huge. Um, the second one um, was uh, Scav Karma. Scav Karma, even j yeah. just the subtle, even though that I know that you guys have a bunch of changes and tweaks you want to make, I'm sure, and there's a bunch of feedback and whatever, but even mm -hmm. just in the most basic form, yep. the entire the entire feel of the game overnight yep. changed to, to I play scav. It's totally different. And as a PMC, it's totally different. Um, and, and honestly, I think VoIP is going to be another example that will, it will just open up so many more opportunities and we'll have to talk about VoIP another time. Um, but I'm looking forward to it and I'm not worried yeah. about it. And I think anybody that doesn't like it should just turn it off and not complain. Um, mm. but I, th that's going to be storytelling. Yeah. Like gold. VoIP. Um, yeah. 
and it's going to be less unimmersive or less immersive breaking than uh, Dicky Needles, Dicky Needles, Dicky Needles. Hold your fire, hold your fire, hold your fire. <laughs> Stop all the time. Um, but yeah, actually, but the... actually, I didn't thought about it because I was always uh, nervous about the the keeping of the immersion. Oh, but Nikita. I never thought about. I never thought about Dicky Needles and stuff and this. Yeah, so, none of that's immersive. It way, would be way more immersive if I'm like, imagine yeah. holding someone ransom, a scav, like, okay, I'll take you out on reserve with me, but drop that SV-98, you know, yeah. or I'll pop you in the head and you ain't making out of here. Like, I just, you can't do that unless you can talk. I just want to encourage you really quick. I don't want to, I don't want to like overtake you what you're saying, Veritas. I want to encourage you a little bit, Nikita. I don't know if you guys are doing this as like big brain 500 IQ or this was an accident. But all the events you're doing around the scav car, the scav extracts, like even before the wipe, the 100,000 USD, the stuff you're doing now, the scav karma, I think what you're doing is you're preparing the players for VoIP. And here's a really short example that you reset the scav karma, you get, you know, scav karma for taking the car extracts. Yesterday, I wanted to test it out. I spawned an interchange with a pistol and I ran to the car extract. Somebody already took it. There were four other PMCs there that were sad somebody else took it. Now, we had no reason to work together, right? The car wasn't there. So we should have just killed each other, right? Nope. Mm -hmm. We all just looked at each other and started doing thumbs up and hold your fire. And as a group, we went through all of interchange. We hit Kiba, we hit Tech Light, we hit Texo, we killed Scavs, we checked for Killa, and all five of us left and extracted together. There was no reason. Like what you guys are doing with these events is you're breaking down the walls of the whole kill on site. And the whole time I was like, with VoIP, this would be amazing. And then I was playing with Jeepo last night and three raids in a row, we adopted a scav. We took him through the thing. We gave him loot and then we took the scav extract for him. Like, so I want to encourage you that like, yes, some people will be toxic with VoIP. Some people are going to be jerks. But like it's going to be the minority. You're, you're breaking down these walls already. And like we betrayed some people last night, too. It's not everybody has to work together. It's Tarkov, man. Anything goes. But like oh, I won. V, I won. V so great. <laughs> I had a one V seven because I rolled up on on reserve and I got I got bored with the whole farming, you know, the XFIL thing. So I'm like, I'm a PMC. I'm going to try to get true to born in heaven. I'm going to, you know, whatever. And I roll up and there's like three squads of PMCs that are all just sitting there not paying attention. And I'm like pop headshot you know and all of a sudden they're all screaming hold your fire what the hell's wrong with you but then it was like you know it, it, it was just crazy yeah um and it totally changes the way you play and now they should learn that you know if you want to use this this mechanic you need to not be out in cover because there are still threats in the game yeah um but have you have you seen um the like the patterns that have evolved they came from nothing it's not like yeah. someone made a video the fact that you i walk up to a scav and what I'll do is if I have a, a, a quest item that I don't need anymore, um, like a, if I have a morphine or a hose or a gas analyzer, it does, it's not worth a lot to me. I'll drop it for a scab. It has become like an unspoken rule. You walk up, I drop something, you drop something, and we trade. Yep. <laughs> it happens nine out of ten times. And no, I don't, I, I, it's amazing to me that that has come out of this. And now imagine if you could say... Hey man, you have any gas in like, Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. What do you need? Because that's what you know. If you're a bunch of homeless hobos, you know, working together, you you know, it makes sense that you would try to help each other out yep. and then be able to work together. Um, so really, VoIP, I, VoIP. I don't. VoIP is going to be. It's gonna. There are gonna be plenty of times where it'll lose immersion. Twenty of time. Plenty of times where it'll drastically increase the immersion. Overall, I think that the whole thing will go up. Um, yes. But. Uh, I, I Nevertheless, I have uh, the high stakes on the VoIP and uh, especially how we design it yeah. right now. So it will we will try to fight with the uh, abusive VoIP of course. use and uh, I hope uh, it will be all right. And we will see actually how it will go. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't I think, think you can go wrong if you default it to off. Yes. If you if you default it to off, so that if nobody if you don't want it or you don't know about it, you'll never experience any of it. Um, yes. If you want it, you can opt into it. Then I don't think people can really be that upset. 
as long as you can mute it and it yeah. defaults to off, I think that's the way to go. And there's yeah. and there's always like a, a grace period. Like I would say like the first few weeks, people are going to be trolls just to be trolls. Like I think it will level out and yeah, you'll just, have to pe wait. People will just get bored being trolls. And I think it will like level out after like a week or two to people. People exactly. People want it only the people that want to use it, use it. And because they want to use it, they use it well. But I didn't okay. mean to, I didn't mean to get in. What were you we, saying? We, Maritas? We will we we will see how, how it will be. I I think uh, VoIP is pretty natural, and yeah. EFT uh, will be pretty natural because I agree. It's uh, it's a good thing to communicate, and uh, with this with such level of communication, actual like communication, like proximity based communication, uh, the scuff fights or random PMC uh, gathering will receive much more tactical abilities much more tactical yes uh, like you get location power. yeah so the, the fights could be uh like really like more complex and more and with teams yeah within your team because you can say hey is that you joe and you hear yeah from around the corner to your left you know that the guy on your left is your teammate so you don't That's need like a teammate indicator it, mm -hmm. and it, even if they're the same pmc face and they're wearing the same gear because they're wearing meta gear or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just hearing the voice and having the, the that context, you now know if I hear footsteps on my right. Normally we have to say, "Is that you?" It's like wiggle. I don't know, wiggle. You know, <laughs> yeah. like but jump, with, jump. But with VoIP, you can you can say, "No, this is me over here." Then not only will you know who is a threat and who's not, but now the other people will know that where you are. So it's it's a really nice balance. Um, yep. But, but yeah, so the the, la the last p uh, thing I wanted to say, the third feature that was huge and changed the game, which I think was, I, I never saw this coming, but surgical kits. So that good. completely, back in the day when you'd run into a scav um, like 30 <laughs> seconds into a forest, uh, a, a woods, woods run, run, and your stomach got blacked out, you, it's like, I, you leave, <laughs> it's over. Surgical kits made it so that now I can, I can survive like five team fights yep. and it's amazing and it totally changed the game so i guess the, the last idea or last topic i want to bring up um and then we can we can close up here is is do you see any other like either big or small changes to the game that will you're hoping will significantly change the game will a change lot. the way people play a lot like i i think the, <laughs> the funny thing is this year is like the most uh, like feature enriched that kind of feature it will change the game inertia for example yeah. will change the game voip will change the game radio sets will change change the game <clears throat> uh, new types of x x, x fields in fields uh, of the locations will change the game in uh, yeah uh, um, I'm starting to, to like mid, like mid raid, like different kind of things. Like for example, uh, um, inventory extract. Just your like backpack. You can extract your backpack Nikita. with the vehicle exfil. So it will change. <sighs> totally, yeah, dude, I'm game. so that's so amazing. I'm so excited for that like many many things and it could be small features that are use it it's easy to implement yeah and the big ones uh yeah like there will be like a lot of changes a lot of f features that will change the game and uh, most of them 99 percent uh are predicted to be this way yeah all of these uh, features that you described were predicted exactly uh, to change this this uh, fields of the game, and uh, some of them, like one or two percent, uh, could like lead to some unpredictable things in good way or bad way. So you must understand that it's not a like oh, how to say it. Like we don't know exactly how it will be. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and it's always we need a room to maneuver change it or even remove it at all yeah that's why i like i i, I talk, talk about um voip in general that it could be it will have the ability to be removed quickly from the game yeah if, if i will see and uh, like i will see that 
people will just abuse it and ruin the experience. But again, it will be off by default. So most likely it will be all right. And yeah. most likely it will bring you more closer to the perfect rate, you know? Yes. And uh, we, 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 can, we, we could risk on, on that. And uh, I think it will be all right. <clears throat> that's awesome. It's so it's so good to hear, man. It's so it's so exciting. And like and I think that's it's a good reminder for me to hear that because it makes so much sense. But exactly like you guys can plan to a certain point, but until it's in the game, you know what I mean? You just have to experience it. So I so like that's I feel like the message I'll, 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 the moral of this whole podcast is really like like let's all be a part of this together if something is in the game that maybe isn't what you thought it was supposed to be or x y or z it's like we're all working together to make this thing and there comes a point where yeah like you guys put it in the game and you test it and the weight system is a great example of that because you put it in the game and of course there was a lot of pushback and there was a lot of stuff but i love that you guys kind of persevered through a lot of that negativity because like i really think the weight system is an awesome addition to the game and i think it's the best it's ever been and i'm sure you guys will continue to iterate on it as more gear comes and customizable gear and so like mm -hmm. so it's just it's cool to see you guys kind of like persevere through that and really put something in the game now you can see how it reacts to the all the players and then collect yeah. that data make changes and uh, and I and I'm sure that there's going to be more of that with more features, and that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that that you guys can use us to help you perfect the things that you guys are excited about. Yeah, like exactly the whole idea of our like talks today is you learn something new, and we learn something new, and uh, this is how it stands. Like. This is how it, like, settled. So it, other, it, it, it couldn't be, it can't be other way because we need to get this information because this is the unique information for us and that it, it's needed to be, like, per, precisely used to make some new features or make some changes in all, in the old features. And you are, like, you, you get this like uh, new information you get new this new experience and you need to re react to yeah adapt to it learn how to play with it and give us your feedback even unintentionally or intentionally and uh, it's all like the natural cycle of the eft development and i'm talking about it because i can't say that this this mm, how to say it, this Mm. principle will fit in in any other kind of development yeah. other game development so i think this is the natural and unique kind of way of developing eft only and uh let it be this way because uh it works yeah awesome i mean i i have haven't been this excited Dude. reinvigorated again in a long time and i i hope yeah. uh i hope that this was a little bit of a a break from kind of the same old 20 questions um i, I hope you enjoyed it i know the community uh it, it enjoyed it and uh, there's tons of people saying you know we love you nikita thank you yeah uh of course you know I, I took it out of sub only mode and instantly it was like, are there drops, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fix your game. It's Decent. like, Oh God. But, um, but, but listen, I want to thank you. And I want to give you a chance. If there's anything else you want to say, um, by all means, go ahead and say it now. Otherwise, uh, feel free to go, go get some rest. You, you deserve it. You earned it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, for having me. It was, uh, like pretty big amount of, uh, mm, interesting ideas and interesting uh, topics to discuss and uh, uh, every single time uh, when it comes to an actual podcast or different kind of calls or discussions within the streamers or the fans of the game or like different kind of people it's always it gives me ideas because there the, the, the weren't a single podcast that i didn't uh, write something down uh, yeah like during this podcast so it's it's always 
uh, always finding and keeping some of the ideas uh, to make the game better. And uh, this is cool. Uh, I don't know what to say more because actually I said a lot of yeah. things already. <clears throat> yeah. I I I hope uh, like that eventually uh, we will bring you closer to the perfect trade that we discussed, and it means that everything must be working well enough, or even better than well enough, and that's why you're continue to bombard me with the <laughs> but better fix your game and I will, I will try to because you know I'm only one person in the company and I will definitely fix the game by this hand <laughs> <laughs> at least at least I will say in our general like uh, lead developers chat that guys you know that we need to fix the game did you know <laughs> did you know <clears throat> so yeah uh, thank you very much yeah and um, report stuff uh, discuss uh, different kind of things, issues, and to do it like in positive, constructive environment, and everything will be all right. Especially, um, it will help actually, and uh, it's always a good thing to see. Even if even if we have a problematic release or something like the patch release, it's always good to see that some of you are wanting help and giving us the exact points what's wrong and without yeah. additional kind of words like it's just yeah. like things that you want to be fixed as fast as possible with a lot uh, with as much information as possible and this is this is cool and it, this kind of things really helps us to fix things and uh, make the game better and i wish it, it could be more uh situations like this yeah. in the future this right is on. It. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for for joining us today. I hope I hope that you know, and I hope that the team knows that, like, even in its current state, you guys have created so many like perfect raids. Like, you guys have created something special. That's why we're all addicted. I've heard a million times Tarkov's ruined other shooters for me. Like, I hope the team knows that, like, even right now, it's such a special and crazy and wow. amazing game. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for, for watching. Uh, if you kind of just hopped in, this whole thing is going to be live on YouTube in the next few days in the podcast channel. Once again, Nick Gene Burn on Instagram, Gene Burn on SoundCloud, the best freaking video game music ever. Um, thank you once again to Nikita. Thank you guys for watching and we will definitely see you all on the next one. Peace. Bye bye.